talking with Robin, and he is a producer on the game um, Awesome Knot. Uh, in short, Awesome Knot is uh, like a, kind of a 2D version, 2D platforming version of League of Legends or Dota. Mm -hmm. So um, if you can imagine those games as a 2D platformer, you pretty much got it. We showed it off at PAX, and we're here at GDC showing off it off again. Awesome. Uh, so can you show it to us? Sure, yeah, let's go. You want to play, or shall I just show it? Show? Would you mind showing me? No, it's fine. Thank you. How was the reception at PAX? Uh, it was very good. Uh, we had a lot of people just dropping by, saying like, hey, oh man, I love Austin Knots, and people who hadn't played a while, saying, like, hey, you guys finally do a new map, and then they came and played, and we had people just play for hours on end, and nice. that, that was amazing. It's, uh, it's actually our first big convention, mm -hmm. for after really after launch. Mm -hmm. And it's just awesome to, to run into people who love the game, who played it a ton, and who still love it. So, but I'll show you a new map. And I'll just take a random character. And I'll go with this. So what we did is, because um, fans have been asking for a new map for, for months now. Um, and we, we asked them for feedback, like, hey, what do you guys, if we do a new map, what would you guys like? And uh, our, most of our, our top players are like, hey, this map is, is the best one you got. It, it's the one that's the most classically uh, like League of Legends or Dota with two lanes and two turrets each uh, and you can just push one of them and get into the base. Um, and so we, we kind of went for the same setup. Uh, this map has four turrets as well, two lanes, um, but we also wanted to do something unique because you know, there's no fun just putting out a new map if it's the same as the one you already got. Um, so we wanted to have it more stealth focused um, and we have a lot of small hiding areas in the map. Um, there's actually something new, which is a pickup. It's like a power up. The it's the first time we ever did that. Uh, and when you get it, you turn invisible. Uh, and now, like this character I'm playing right now, actually, he's our stealth character. Um, but now any character can turn invisible. Like you, you know, even the biggest guy that does an exploding attack, he can turn invisible and sneak up on people and just explode right in their face. Awesome. And at PAX, that was hilarious. Just, you know, having characters that are not really suited for stealth mm -hmm. do something weird that does work in stealth, mm -hmm. that was just a ton of fun. Interesting. So, so I'm noticing a lot of a, a trend between all these new games that are coming out, especially MOBAs, where you can really customize the characters that you play. So, like you just gave an example of, like the biggest brawliest guy can now be stealthy. Yeah. Uh, so you have you have neat quirks like that, kind of not native traits to uh, the champion that you play. Yeah. So, so um, why is why is that so important? And, ha and also, how did you manage to balance all these characters? Um. Well, the reason why we think it's important that our characters are flexible mm -hmm. is um, we only have 13 or 14 right now. So, you know, other games they have, I don't know, close to 100 or probably even more than 100. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, it, that just doesn't work for us. Um, so we have a, a loadout system which allows you to pick the upgrades you want to have in the game before you actually enter it. Um, so unlike like having one store with a thousand or hundreds of items for all the characters in it, all the upgrades are unique, and that really gives us the ability to to like prepare characters for for flexibility. And players can be like, "Hey, I like doing this with my character." And you can just put those upgrades in your loadout, and then you can get them in the game. And in terms of balancing, um, we used to do uh, just playtests ourselves, and um, you know, that, went, well, that was fine for a while, but especially on Steam, we have a pretty hardcore community. Mm -hmm. And it's also a very solid community. So what we actually did is get um, the, the, some of the 40 best players we got, put them together, and send out an early build to them. Like, hey, hey guys, um, we got a new thing. We're going to redo something in the balance where we got a new character. And we want you to play it and let us know what you guys think. Because... When we play in the office, we all we've been even playing for years now, so right. we all know exactly what the other guy's going to do. We know all the tactics, and that really doesn't reflect how the game plays out online. So we just get regular players, have them play, and they come up with the craziest stuff. It's like, hey, they find bugs, they they find balance issues that are like, hey, if you calculate it this way, then this character is slightly more powerful than that, and then so this should be a little bit more pricey or stuff. You get a lot of feedback like that, stuff that we normally wouldn't think about. Um, 
and that's just awesome. So it seems like you really draw heavily on the community that plays the game uh, for implementing new kinds of uh, designs and characters and, and attributes and things like that. Uh, yeah. How how much or how, how how heavily do you rely on community feedback? For characters, we usually take a look at like, hey, what do we got? What what would be cool to add? Um, and then we build something around that, and then we get our community feedback. So it's it's split in that way. Um, but also. Um, we're still a little bit experimenting with the, the like community beta feedback because we we did one where we implement, implemented all their feedback pretty much directly, uh, and that also kind of imbalanced the game. Um, so we're taking it a little bit more care right now, mm -hmm. but still uh, relying heavily on their feedback. Right. And also, we actually had a, a contest recently for a cold design your awesome not, where we had people send in submissions like for a backstory and explain how the skills would work. Uh, and we got over 700 submissions for that. And um, we, we copy-pasted that into Word, and it was like 1,200 pages. <laughs> so we're still going through that. Uh, and we're going to pick five of those 700. And then we're going to put a leg base. Hey, we think these are absolutely awesome. Um, can you guys come up with like visual designs for these? And we're going to pick a couple of those. And then we're probably going to have another vote to see which, which one will actually make it into the game. And in the end, you know, the game, the game lives and dies by its community. The community likes to, I mean, they, they make themselves very apparent, like, hey, we're, we're here and we really want to hear, have our voices heard. Yeah. Uh, and it's great that producers are starting to pick up on that. You know, if you really want a successful game with longevity and flexibility, you really kind of have to listen and have an ear to the community. So it's great that you actually take that into account. Yeah, thanks. And... No, it's it's beginning a little easier to just you know get feedback from your community because on Steam you got all these communities and you get the community hub where you can very easily just talk with people mm -hmm. and we, you know we get pretty much feedback through any channel we can we use Facebook for that we get a ton of feedback there nice. and uh, our own forums are are they went they exploded we, this is our second game and like we, our previous game Sword of Soldiers we also had a forum for that. But I think we already have more than like a hundred times as many posts in the Ossonauts forum than we do in Swords and Soldiers just because yes. the community just loves to talk about it. Um, they love to discuss stuff and it, it's really helpful for us to just know what they all think and what they like and what they don't like. And then we kind of adjust to that. We started out on the game in 2009 and we wanted to make it uh, like Dota for consoles. Mm -hmm. And we released it on XPLA and PSN in May last year. Um, and we just, you know, we made that because we wanted to have an experience like that on consoles. Do you have any idea, uh, any plans about esports or getting into that? Because this is multiplayer, so mm -hmm. it, any spectator modes coming? Uh, spectator mode is something we're heavily discussing in our team. It's it's very hard to do directly. You know, we got so many, so many cool ideas that we want to do, and spectator mode is very complex. Yes. Um, so we'll just have to see if that ever happens. Personally, I'd love it. Um, but you know, it's a ton of work. Yes. And yeah, so there's like a thousand things we'd like to add, and spectator mode's one of those. Anything else you'd like to cover before we wrap? Um, I guess well, the map's coming out soon. Like, uh, it's in beta right now, so people are playing it, and we're getting their feedback. And depending on what they say, we we might change stuff, and that could take a couple of weeks. And if they're good, like, hey, oh, it's fine the way it is, then it could be in life next week. But probably, probably mid-April, I guess there's going to be some stuff we need to fix. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate no it, Robin. Problem. Awesome. Cool. Right. See ya.